we're going to get started here in a minute or so. Um, we have a, a small but passionate group here, kind of like the community working group itself. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, hi there. Uh, I'm George Demet. Uh, I'm the, the chair of the community working group. We've got Rachel Lawson, Adam Hill, Jordana Fung here, uh, who are uh, some of the other members of the community working group. In addition, uh, the group also includes uh, Emma Karianis and uh, Mike Anello, uh, neither of whom are here uh, in Vienna. So, and so, so we're kind of the core group. Uh, in addition. Uh, we also have a number of, of kind of what we call subject matter experts or SMEs who uh, we consult with on uh, as needed basis for additional advice on issues that might require specialized knowledge, right? Legal issues, mental health issues, regional culture, stuff like that. So what we're going to do here is, is basically go through a few slides, kind of give a little summary of you know, what the community working group is, what it isn't, what we do, what we don't do, uh, some of what we have done in the last year, some, uh, and some of the things uh, we want to do. And uh, then most of this, I'm really hoping, can just kind of be a conversation, uh, you know, and uh, ask questions, just talk, anything, whatever, whatever we want to do. So, um, what we do, um, we, have, we have several different major things that we do. Uh, one is that we help resolve conflict between uh, members of the Drupal community. Uh, you know, this, this can take a wide variety of forms. We'll, uh, forms of conflict, we'll talk about some of the kinds of issues that we deal with on an uh, upcoming slide. But the, the basic central idea is that, you know, we're chartered uh, to uphold the Drupal Code of Conduct. And uh, we are, we're here to do this. We're, we're all volunteers. Uh, we don't have any uh, funding. We don't have any staff or any kind of other outside resources. Uh, we are also um, not a part of the Drupal Association. Uh, we're uh, an independent uh, part of Drupal's governance. Um, and our charter actually comes directly from Dries. So ultimately, uh, the members of the group uh, kind of serve at his pleasure. Um, as, a, uh, as, as a very practical reality, Dries is fairly hands-off with us. Uh, you know, he trusts our judgment, and uh, you know, when it, we want to add new people to the group, uh, he accepts our recommendation. Uh, but he's the one who you know, gives us the thumbs up. So um, the, other, the other part of what we do, in addition to the, the kind of conflict resolution and mediation side of things, is promoting the health of the community. And um, so again, because we are a volunteer group, uh, we have a fairly limited capacity to be able to do this. But one thing uh, that's really special that we do every year is the uh, Aaron Winborn Award. For uh, those of you who don't know, uh, Aaron Winborn was a longtime uh, Drupal contributor. Uh, yeah, he uh, uh, lost his battle with ALS a, a few years ago. and. Um, but it was just really someone who, who in many ways kind of really exemplified a lot of what makes the Drupal contributor community such a wonderful place. And so uh, every year for the last three years, we've given out uh, an award at DrupalCon North America uh, in his memory. Uh, the first year it went to, uh, down the bottom right, it went to Kathy Tees. Uh, and then uh, in DrupalCon New Orleans, it went to Gabor Haichi. And then uh, this past year, uh, Earlier this year in Baltimore, we gave it to Nikki Stevens. So um, that's something really special we do. And we, we collect nominations from the community at large. Um, and that's actually, there's, there's kind of a, a secret double uh, objective there, which is to find out who are people in our community all, all around the world who are dealing, doing wonderful things within the community. And so, um, and those are folks who, you know, we may be able to reach out to or look at as people who might be able to become uh, either, you know, future uh, community spotlight people or even people who might uh, join the uh, community working group in the future. So uh, the other thing that we, um, we work on is providing uh, conflict resolution uh, resources and guidance. 
so we have a, a few few different uh, kind of in progress things we've been working on uh, lately. We have some other uh, resources uh, on our on our website uh, at dribble.org, and um, and in general, we're really all about doing whatever we can to help improve the overall health of the community. So, <laughs> in terms of what we're not, um, so so this is a quote uh, that we one of us pretty much says at pretty much <laughs> every one of our meetings, we're not the Drupal police, uh, and. Uh, so uh, this, this comes up, and I, and I think this is, uh, you know, a challenge because, you know, one of our responsibilities is, is to uphold the Drupal Code of Conduct, and so uh, I think oftentimes, uh, you know, people uh, may see us as, as enforcers uh, or, you know, as uh, particularly, you know, if, they're, if we receive a report, that you know, there's been a conflict, and we reach out to the people involved in that conflict. Uh, sometimes there's uh, there, there's some resistance to that, and uh, but really, um, you know, fundamentally, what we are are not about is being a police force. We're not about punishing people. We are uh, all about uh, providing positive mediation and conflict resolution. Right. So. Uh, Yes, uh, so like I said, you know, we're not here to decide who's right and who's wrong. Uh, it's, it's to really provide that space uh, for conflicts to be resolved among community members in a, in a calm, measured, and respectful way. Um, so, you know, we don't proactively investigate uh, community members. Again, that's not uh, part of what we do or are even really able to do. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, and it, you know, essentially, you know, when we are working on issues, they're ones that you know people have brought to us uh, for for whatever reason. Uh, we cannot contact law enforcement um, on your behalf. That is actually specifically prohibited by uh, our our charter. So, uh, you know, we can say, hey, if there is a serious situation where it looks like um, that might be a good idea, we can certainly make that recommendation. But we're not. We're not allowed to to do that ourselves. And uh, the other thing that's uh, in our charter is we don't respond to requests to take specific punitive actions. So if somebody reaches out to us and says, hey, I, I think so-and-so is a jerk and should be banned, um, then, yeah, that we're not going to do that. Uh, we might come back and say, well, can you give us more information uh, you know, about why you think so-and-so is a jerk and what happened and explore that a little bit more. But uh, we're not going to um, take any, any you know, uh, actions just because someone asks us to. So one of the things um, we've been really trying to do over the last year or so is improve the transparency and visibility of the working group. Uh, you know, again, this is, this is a thing because you know, the work that we do um, centered around, you know, particularly centered around conflict resolution is work where sort of discretion and confidentiality is very important. Uh, and, and again, I think to, to some folks that can sometimes feel like, well, you know, they're working in secret behind closed doors. What is that all about? Um, so we have tried to do whatever we can without violating that confidentiality. Um, to, to really help people understand what we're doing. So back in March of 2016, uh, we started publishing our public um, our minutes, public versions of our meeting minutes uh, every week in Google Docs. Um, and so uh, those go up every week after within a day or two of when our meeting is done. And um, they're, uh, you know, and they're worded in a way that, uh, you know, folks can kind of understand what sorts of things we've been dealing with even if, uh, they don't know precisely the names of who's involved. Um, another thing we did last summer, um, it, we were getting a lot of reports and issues uh, centered around um, a lot of contributor burnout, particularly during the Drupal 8 cycle. So we actually did a contributor survey and conducted a few interviews back in the summer of 2016, uh, really kind of talking to to people to really understand what some of the, the core issues were with that frustration and burnout. And so, and that's helped inform um, some of our, our initiatives, which we'll talk about in a little bit. 
Uh, we started a Drupal community Twitter account in the fall of 2016. We don't tweet from it very often. Uh, that's where we make announcements. Um, it's an outgoing thing only. You can't file reports via Twitter. Um, we ask that you do that via the incident report form on Drupal.org. Uh, obviously, we're doing this session right here uh, today. We also did a session uh, at DrupalCon Dublin where we talked a lot about that uh, contributor burnout, but as well as some other issues. Uh, we had a couple issues uh, that received some kind of public attention uh, that we had to um, uh, issue kind of public statements about. Uh, there was a, a harassment incident at DrupalCon New Orleans uh, where uh, someone was asked to leave the event, and uh, so we, we had to provide some detail about that. Uh, there was an incident uh, in, at Drupal Camp Munich last year that uh, had gotten some attention on social media. And so, uh, you know, we, we had to go and, and we talked with, with all the various parties involved and, uh, and kind of published sort of uh, our, our perspective on, on that situation. And then, of course, obviously, there were some high profile community issues this spring. Um, and uh, so we, we issued a couple of statements uh, to kind of clarifying uh, our involvement and, and some of the issues uh, you know, that, that we were asked to, to weigh in on uh, with that. Um, following that, there were, there were the, uh, uh, the Drupal Association uh, brought in Whitney Hess to mediate some uh, community conversations at uh, DrupalCon uh, Baltimore and then later uh, online. And those resulted in a series of uh, kind of a summary from uh, from Whitney um, and some questions and concerns that people uh, had raised, uh, particularly specifically around the community working groups. So we posted those in our public issue queue uh, and uh, posted some responses to that feedback. I, I think almost all of those issues are still open. We're kind of leaving them open for a while, um, but um, on, on a few of them, there are kinds of things that you know we can't really take action on right now. Um, but we really just want to get folks' thoughts on those. Um, and then the final thing, we, this is actually coming soon. Um, we've actually streamlined our incident report form to make it uh, far less intimidating. Uh, we, we realized that uh, our form was very kind of long and complicated, and that was maybe uh, making it less likely for people to report uh, incidents. And so we've streamlined that. And I think I just need to go through and make the spelling less British and publish it online. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that, was, that was Emma who helped with that. And so we do have three Brits in the group. So uh, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're always uh, going back and forth on spelling. Um, so this is a list of the incident reports that we have received in 20, calendar year 2017 so far. <clears throat> and this is current up through actually earlier today when uh, we received an incident. Um, so this gives you a kind of a sense of, of some of the issues that we deal with. Um, a lot of the disputes we deal with are, are basically people having arguments and conflict in the issue queues. Um, we uh, I had a, a fair number uh, of, of reports this year relating to uh, people uh, being harassed on Twitter, uh, Drupal community people being harassed um, by folks who either were other Drupal community people who were, who were uh, hiding behind anonymous accounts to, uh, to harass uh, Drupal community people. Uh, we received uh, three reports, again, related to that uh, community situation this spring. Three reports that were not related to Drupal. So. So on many Drupal websites, the default configuration is you have that made with Drupal that appears in the footer. So if someone is using a Drupal website to harass someone else, even if that has nothing to do with the community, the person who objects to that website will see that made with Drupal at the bottom and will click on it and will go through to drupal.org where they will find the incident report form. So we've received issues, for example, where I think there was an issue with a, a taxi company, and, and I, they must have been running a Drupal website, because we received a customer service complaint about this taxi company 
we have received reports with people talking about some pretty intense uh, like issues with tin hats and uh, aliens and all sorts of things. So that's just kind of part of what we get. Um, but it's a fairly small percentage of the overall total. So, um, but it, it does kind of mix things up a little bit for us. Um, and uh, I, I jump sure, yeah, in here. Here's the mic. We, 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 have, we, we still have to kind of take them. We, we have to kind of explain that that's not really what we do, but we still have to take it seriously yes. if that happens because that's that person's impression of Drupal. So exactly. we can't just go, ha ha, aliens, sorry, go away. It's, 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 it's more, it, there's more to it than that. Yeah, I apologize. I should have said. So we actually do have a template response for those kinds of issues where we're like, you know, I'm really sorry. This sounds like a terrible situation. Uh, you know, I really wish we could do something for you. But you have to understand we're we're just we're 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 an open source project. We we can't help you with your problem. We have no way of helping you with your problem. Um, you know, so please contact the appropriate authorities. Um, so we do get a few of those a year. Um, we had a, a a specific interpersonal dispute between two community members that. Uh, uh, we received a couple of reports about that was one where we, we actually did involve one of our, our subject matter experts. Uh, Drupal.org forum post. Um, we had one that, that, again, this was the one that came in today. There was a harassment incident that occurred um, actually here in Vienna. Um, a, a DrupalCon attendee was, was subjected to some uh, harassment, uh, not within the event and not by anyone. Uh, relating to Drupal, but uh, out and about in Vienna, they they were uh, uh, harassed by someone, and so um, and uh, so so those kinds of things are are helpful for us to have on the record, um, you know, even though they may not be specifically actionable, but it is good for us to know, and and that's also feedback we can pass on uh, to the Drupal Association and others that you know this happened at this event. Um, yeah, we had an issue. So see, these are kind of sort of one-off things. So I'll blaze through them fairly quick. We had issues relating to uh, something someone had said in their user profile on Drupal.org. Uh, we had one relating to some unproductive uh, DrupalCon session feedback. Um, and then uh, we had, yeah, one relating to multiple incidents involving a, a community member. This was part of kind of a, a community member who has had a number of things and was just kind of like a uh, letting us know uh, about some incidents that occurred. Uh, there, uh, this is again is one we get one or two of these a year where there will be a community dispute over a domain name, a Drupal domain name. Uh, this is very often related to two competing groups or, or organizations within a country or region who want to have the official Drupal domain for uh, that country or reason, uh, region, um, but the trademark is actually controlled by Dries directly. So we we refer those uh, straight to Dries. We uh, go back to the reporter and we say this is this is the uh, where you can refer those issues. Uh, in addition to all these, these are just the ones that came in through our incident report form. We have also received uh, a fair number of reports via directly via email. Uh, primarily those related to uh, harassment that various community members had been subjected to on Twitter, Reddit, other sites, social media. So um, some of the other things we've done to help, uh, a lot of what we do is actually providing feedback and advice. Uh, so again, when we have uh, some high profile community issues, um, you know, we will actually work with the various parties involved to, to help, you know, provide whatever advice we can. We are, uh, you know, we really see ourselves as kind of this neutral party that's here to provide advice to anyone who asks. Um, we have provided some advice to Drupal Association um, at their request on some proposed changes to Drupal.org case studies, contribution credits, and community spotlights. This was kind of in the vein of, hey, we're thinking about making these changes to Drupal.org. Do you, as you know, uh, a kind of community representative, see have any questions or concerns about that? And we provide that feedback. 
you know, again, um, similarly, uh, advice and feedback relating to DrupalCon and other community events. Um, one of the really cool things we've done this year, and I'm really excited about this, is we've uh, actually had a couple of really wonderful conversations with our counterparts, essentially, in other open source projects. So uh, we've, we've spoken with folks from Kubernetes and Mozilla, people who are responsible for either forming or enforcing or upholding the code of conduct in their communities. And really, this is kind of a trading tips and best practices we're actually one of the communities that's been doing this the longest. Um, so uh, what we see is that other communities really love to hear about, you know, what we're doing, um, you know, pitfalls to avoid, things like that. Um, one of the big things we're working on this week, uh, there was a, we published a blog post on Monday and we were in the, uh, Community Summit, uh, working with uh, community members to develop a framework for evolving community governance. Um, again, in our charter, we're actually forbidden in our charter from making any decisions involving community governance, um, but um, because there is no, no organization that, or group that's actually responsible for community governance, um, we're working to help develop that framework and to make sure it's as community driven as possible. And then finally, um, on this, uh, we've been uh, code of conduct contacts uh, for DrupalCons in Baltimore and Vienna. So here in Vienna, Rachel and Adam are code of conduct uh, uh, contacts. So if one of them disappears from the stage very quickly, you'll know that something is probably up. So we sat down this summer and, and you know, we, um, We've been through a lot this year, um, <laughs> dealing with a lot of things. And uh, there was a certain point where things had, had, we were able to take a break and say, okay, this is a really good opportunity for us to kind of sit down and think about everything that's happened over the last, you know, six to nine months or so, and really for ourselves say, what, what have we learned? Um, and, you know, how, how could we do what we do better? So we, we had a few, few of these, um, and we're still actually kind of working on that because uh, Adam was actually not initially part of that and I think has some additional feedback to add um, based on his experience. But one of the things we know we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, when we're good in a mediation session that we're doing a really good job of ensuring that both parties who are involved um, have really good expectations for what that process is. And again, I think this goes to understanding that we are here to mediate, not to judge. And so uh, when parties are in a, a mediation process, we're, they, they shouldn't feel like they need to prove their case to us, but what we're really looking for them is to understand their perspective so that we can uh, find some common ground, hopefully find a solution. Um, and we need to do a better job of making sure that, uh, that, that folks understand that, which is hard when, you know, there's a situation and it's intense and emotional and people feel like they've been wronged. Um, but we need to be able to kind of help them to step back a little bit and, and work things through. Uh, so that it, it goes in the same point. It's just making sure that we're communicating more frequently and regularly. Um, sometimes it's hard because, you know, we'll talk to one party and then it may take a while as we're working with the other party and in the meantime, the first person doesn't know what's going on and, um, you know, so we, we need to maybe do, get, do a better job of saying, hey, you know, I know it's been a while, it's been a week since we last talked, we're still working with so-and-so, you know, no status update, you know, we'll, we'll check back in in a week, that sort of thing. Um, Again, uh, you know, kind of the same point is, is better documenting and communicating our mediation process. We do have our conflict resolution process documented on Drupal.org. It, it's fairly high level, it's very outlined, um, but I think we can probably do a little bit jo better job of providing more detail and context so that folks who are involved in the process can understand what it's about and others who aren't but, you know, who want to know uh, can understand as well. Um, our escalation process, uh, we need to improve and better document that. Again, when we run into issues that are not covered by the scope of our charter, 
or that may involve issues outside of it, and we may need to escalate it to someone else because they might be impacted by this issue, uh, we need to um, just better document how we do that. Um, and the final point, of course, is making sure that everyone in the community understands uh, who we are, what we're about, and uh, so again, that's part of what we're doing here today. Okay, back in February, we actually sat down and did some strategic planning uh, and to, uh, to really kind of focus on some, some kind of bigger picture things we wanted to do. Um, I think we probably need to come back and revisit some of these things, but in general, I think these, in a broad sense, these points still really hold. Um, our charter, as written back in 2012, is really focused around code of conduct enforcement, upholding the code of conduct, and around conflict resolution. The reality is that that is one part of what we do, but it's not the only thing that we do that we do or that we want to do. And we would really like it. Uh, we can make some changes to our to our charter to better reflect um, the work that we do around supporting community health, which means that we will have fewer code of conduct issues and conflicts to resolve. So it's really, you know, for us, right? So we have less work to do. <laughs> I'm being facetious. Um, <laughs> so uh, expand. one thing we actually did is uh, expanding our membership and involving more members of the community. So uh, Rachel and Jordana uh, were added uh, into the group in May. So they are the neophytes here. Uh, and uh, and uh, we also, this summer, have added the subject matter experts. Um, so we actually, I think, are at a pretty good point with, with the number of folks that we have in terms of the volume of issues that we have to deal with, um, though of course it is one of those things because, you know, we do have, you know, folks, you know, last, uh, you know, this is kind of grueling emotional things and it's something you really only want to do for a certain amount of time before you're moving on and so we always want to be able to get uh, fresh blood into the group. Um, and then, you know, really, again, focusing, we, we identified coming out of that uh, survey last year uh, uh, around uh, contributor burnout and frustration that there were two really big initiatives that we felt would make a dramatic impact improving the health of our community. One of those is building a mentorship ladder. Uh, and this is not just about getting people in on the ground level to you know, learn Drupal, but really making sure that there are people who, are, who can work with uh, someone, uh, uh, a high potential contributor throughout the process. So, you know, so after you get past, we're actually, really, we're actually fairly good at onboarding people. Uh, where we really struggle is when we get, you know, kind of up that, that difficulty curve and getting people up to that point where they can be Drupal experts or be Drupal masters and feel comfortable and all that, and that really involves uh, having a really good uh, and more formalized mentorship program. Right now, the reality is it ends up being informal. So when you go and you talk to anyone who's like considered like a Drupal guru, you talk to them long enough and, and sure enough they'll say, I wouldn't be here if so-and-so hadn't given me so much time, right? And that work is itself you know, unrecognized and unsupported, and so we need to find better ways of doing that. The other thing um, that we need to work on is uh, community leadership initiatives. Uh, Adam and I are both passionate about this from kind of different directions. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in, in uh, leadership training, uh, which is really helping uh, people who are, who are potential leaders in the community or people who are put into leadership positions in the community uh, receive a training to understand some kind of basic leadership skills. Um, again, so they don't get overwhelmed, so they don't burn out, so they really can help empower and enable others. So, I think, is that my final slide? It was. So, that's uh, who we are, what we've, uh, what we've been doing, and what we want to do, and now is the fun discussion portion of our, of our presentation. So you guys have the mic there. I'm gonna move over here. And uh, there's a... Michael's no, here. 
There is a mic. There's a mic here. Is there another mic close to that? Or you can just shout at us. We'll repeat it back into the microphone for the recording. So I, I would start with um, one of the things that we read about events and scheduling a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll, we can, more than one of us can answer the question, because I think we have a, a few, like, different perspectives on this, and so, yes, I will repeat the question. So, uh, so the question was about uh, the fact that right now uh, our chartered authority derives from Dries, um, and, uh, you know, so uh, you said we were appointed by Dries. In reality, um, I think I'm the only member of the group who Dries originally appointed. Uh, the, the rest of us have kind of been nominated by the group as a whole since then. And you know, we went to Dries and said, hey, Dries, we'd like to add so-and-so uh, you know, to the group. And Dries has said, sounds good, right? Um, but you know, if Dries didn't like our choice, um, or if he didn't like what we were doing, he could always, you know, yeah, get rid of us. So, um, so that's a very valid question. Um, so right now, and I've I've been I've been kind of digging back into the history of of how we were created and chartered as a group, and I think the idea that it was Dries uh, at the head of the community working group came out of the idea that the group was going to be around solving conflict in the issue queues. And so from that perspective, it was seen as an extension of his authority as project and technical lead, right? And, um, and it, as I actually went back through some, of the, through the, some of the threads at the time, I actually see Dries himself saying, well, I don't know if I should really be the, the one who's responsible for this, but if there's no one else to do it, sure, right? Um, and... Um, so one of the things we, we have definitely talked about is um, as part of, and we see this as, as part of the larger overall community governance process. Again, via our charter, we can't change our own charter. So uh, that's something that's gotta be figured out as part of a bigger thing. Um, there are a number of possibilities. Um, you know, we could, uh, our charter could be moved under the Drupal Association, um, which would mean that we would have uh, potentially some, you know, legal uh, uh, resources uh, that we would uh, also potentially maybe even have the ability to use staff resources, uh, which would be really nice for some of the things that we want to do. Um, it raises some other questions as well in terms of, you know, checks and balances and, and uh, all of that. So that would be something we would want to explore. Another idea um, you know, we've talked about is it would be awesome if there was kind of like a United Nations of different open source projects and, you know, and the community working groups or their equivalents in each project kind of uh, was able to have issues reviewed by that body. Uh, if there was an issue that like went beyond a single community or an issue that needed to be reviewed by uh, or escalated up for one reason or another, that um, that would be cool, but is fairly ambitious. Um, you know, there's also the possibility again because we have this kind of dual mandate that we could, you know, split those responsibilities, the community health side versus the conflict resolution side, and each of those could sit under uh, a different authority. But I'd love to hear what other folks here have to say. Uh, <clears throat> so we're sorry, we're at the moment as part of the governance changes. This is all 
up for review anyway. And I think what's really important for the CWG is that we've got people in the community who are coming up and helping with the ideas and, and, and uh, what have you to take this kind of thing forward. Because I think it's fair to say that even Dries doesn't really want to be the escalation point. I think he said that pretty publicly. So that, that's, that's a, a, a structure that needs to be reviewed and is currently being reviewed. But if people have ideas and if, uh, um, and if it's something that you're passionate about, <laughs> exactly. We are currently looking for people to help take that government in the community to take that governance uh, uh, work forward. So yeah, um, but we're not here to have the answers on that. Let's put it that way. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's up there for review. Let's put it. Uh, I'd like to hear from the others, but sure. So, uh, you mean as a point of escalation, or you mean as a, as a because I think no, no, that... No, no, we wouldn't do referendums should we expel uh, stalker 007, uh, et cetera. That, that's just something that maybe you guys have a lot of, of stuff to deal with, and you're not going to, hey, we could vote. Do we want you to vote yes to expelling the No, no. We could certainly also vote people within the community of Greece so that they are I mean, I think there's a, percep a perception and, yeah, there's a perception, there's a perception and reality, which I think is what George was trying to say before, like, the concept of people being vetted by Dries, honestly, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I only spoke to Dries as part of the, the CWG uh, three years after joining, do you know what I mean? So it's not, uh, uh, no, honestly, he doesn't. <laughs> We, we, everyone inside of the group was nominated by other people inside the group. None of the people, apart from George, were nominated by Dries. None. So, that, again, it's a perception reality. It's in the charter, but it's not really exactly how it works. It's about, and the people on the group are nominated based around um, uh, what people can expect they can do in a mediation scenario, not based around representing the community. So I think it's a... It's a very, I'm not against the idea of there being more community involvement in terms of who's there at all, but I think we have to be careful to remember this is not a representative role. I don't feel like I'm representing the community. I think I'm uh, giving my time with conflict, uh, conflict mediation, mediation and resolution experience and history in other circles, giving my time to bring that to the Drupal community. So it's not a representative thing. It's a, it's a believe me, it's a, it's a lot of, emotional energy time and and it and it's uh, yeah it's it's not certainly not what i would see as a representational position yeah um like he said before um this is pretty hands off with with what we do but also i think maybe what you're hesitant about is because we've had more talks about governance and you've heard some of that stuff from us but we are not part of taking those actions. We just kind of want to guide it and have the community do that. So we just want to say, like, the representatives are those that we want you guys to choose for the governance issues. We're just there for community health and conflict resolution and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and I, echoing what, what both of you have said, I mean, I, I, I think there should be, a, you know, personally, I think there should be some sort of uh, body in Drupal's governance that is, you know, directly representative of of, of uh, people in the community. But I feel that the community working group, based on the work that we do, uh, requires uh, a really specialized set of skills and a certain kind of personality um, that is really um, not conducive to, you know, electing someone, you know, in a in, from, from the public because, yeah, because, you know, every single person who's here and every single person who's not here and every single person who has been on the group in the past, right, Donna Benjamin, Angie Byron, all of these people, Roel, all of these people who have been on the group in the past, they're all people who are very thoughtful, who are very deliberate, who um, are 
pretty good at separating their emotions from really thinking about what's best for the situation at hand. And those are, those are, those are very specialized skills and, and, you know, and those are the kinds of people who need to be on this group. And, um, you know, so, so whatever mechanism is used to select members of the group, it needs to be able to support that. Anyone else? Yes. Um, I have a question. Um, oh, you try to get the <laughs> okay. um, I have a question in, in understanding the, the, the competence for decisions. Um, I un understood that you are not for juristical issues. You are you try to mediate conflicts. Um, what happens uh, if you cannot solve a conflict? Um, do you have to escalate the decision to a higher instance? Drupal Association or REIS, or are you in the position to, to uh, organize consequences by yourself? <laughs> you go first. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, as we said in our charter, the point of escalation is DRIES. I think there's, I, I'm not going to say exactly, but it's less than one hand the number of times anything has gone to DRIES, and I think a lot less than one hand, let's say. Um, I don't think in the most part that, that the issues that we're dealing with are decision-making issues. We're dealing with creating a space where those people involved in those issues can work them out either between themselves or with the support that we can provide and the spaces we can provide. So in the vast majority, there is no decision-making. We have on occasion had situations, and, and bear in mind, I think we're always learning on this, yeah, and we have a charter which always needs adapting for the way the community expands, like any other aspect of, of governance or um, uh, uh, any other aspect of the community, technical as well. But the, the, so the, the, we've had situations where, for example, we've been working with the Drupal Association for things that are happening in a DrupalCon. DrupalCon, the, the people who are responsible for DrupalCon are the association. So they would have to make a decision and, and the CWG are there much more in the role of um, the mediation side of it, the conversation side of it. And the conflicts can range from being between one person and another person to being pretty much one person to the entire community because it could be someone that's doing something that impacts people in that level. And that's where it becomes very, very difficult. And I think sometimes the, the, the decisions are clear and, and other times the decisions take a lot of time to really work them out. Um, so there is no... The point of escalation by our charter is Dries, but we we very rarely get to that point, and it's usually because we've been able to ensure that the, there is no need for a point of escalation. I forgot what I was gonna say now. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, we are working, I think probably I said uh, earlier today, one of the things that we probably do with regard to conflict resolution, largely is slow things down. So what, what Issues and tools that we have, things like Twitter, and we use Twitter and the issue queue um, set up website. Often you can find a disagreement, uh, a conflict happening, and people are uh, firing emails back and forth or issue comments back and forth very quickly. And probably one of the most things we, that we, yeah, closing, opening, closing. <laughs> Um, one of the, the, probably the most useful things we do is slow them down and give the people time to reflect. If that gives the chance to go, oh, yeah, this is a bit silly. More often than not, that's, that's what we do. So making decisions, it, that's not really what it's about. You know, we don't wield the ban hammer, for want of a better description. It's not like that. Um, normally it's just chatting with people and giving them the opportunity to voice their feelings and perspective without necessarily right in somebody's face. Um, so it's... it's just, just to add as well, I think one of the things that's cropped up a lot recently is, is helping people to understand uh, impact over intention. So helping one person to understand that the person did not intend to hurt or, or cause a problem. 
and on the other side, uh, help the other person understand that they've had an impact, whether they like it or not, you know? And it's kind of, it's, it's getting that balance from, from to, and in the vast majority of cases, when you get people to understand that, uh, they will spend some time to, to, let's say, back down from their position or understand the other person's experience and, and, and therefore um, things move on in which, uh, Trying to cover all of the issues in, in <laughs> sound bites is, is, is impossible, but just if that helps. Sorry, sorry. So, so I, I, I want to talk about banding a bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you've reminded me actually, we talk about backing down. One of the hardest things to do as a human is to back down from a position you've taken. It takes time, it takes effort. And maybe sometimes if we're helping people to do that in a way that makes them feel comfortable, I'm happy with that. Yeah. It, it's a hard thing to do. I know, I've struggled with it myself before. <laughs> yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about the idea of the ban hammer. Um, so, no, no, it, it's, a con it's, a, it's a concept, it's a concept that exists though, right? And, and, and so the idea is like, oh, you know, if you're naughty and you break the code of conduct, the CWG can ban you. And um, so the reality is that one of the reasons the CWG was created was before we had a code of conduct, before we had a community working group, people were getting banned all the time. And, you know, it was, it was, you know, so-and-so goes off in IRC or goes off on the issue queue, and then, you know, there would be this kind of amorphous group of people who had the ability to impose permanent or temporary bans from IRCDrupal.org, and they'd just be like, sorry, you're getting out of line, boom, banned for you. And, um, and, and that, that, back when we were a really tiny community and everyone kind of knew each other, that, that worked okay, um, but obviously it did not scale as we became a, a much larger community. And so um, by the time, it was about five years ago when, uh, when, uh, uh, when the community working group uh, was created, uh, Dries, Dries had a, a series of meetings with a bunch of people. I, I wasn't there, it was, it was out in Portland and they um, worked out a lot of the existing uh, governance structures that we have today. and. Um, and that was really one of the ideas to have this group of people who could, you know, who could be there in those kinds of situations and, and find another uh, path that was, uh, you know, more sustainable for the community as a whole. So, um, again, I think the number of times we have, and I'm talking about like over our entire history, right, as, as a group, the number of times that someone has been banned from Drupal.org or DrupalCon, again, is, is probably like less than, yeah, that one hand. Uh, and um, so we can't, I mean, so we can recommend. So the way it works is if, if, if there's a situation where it's really clear cut, where someone has gone way over the line. Um, and so I'll use the example of the harassment incident uh, in, uh, in New Orleans as the example, uh, somebody just very much crossed the line. And um, so they were, they were removed from that DrupalCon uh, by, uh, by DA staff with our assistance. And um, we, were, we, were, we were looped in into everything that was going on. And then we began the process of trying to work with that individual to you know, really try to understand what was going on, why they did this and everything. And they refused to engage with us, right? So we reached out several times. We're like, hey, you know, we really want to talk. We really want to hear your perspective on this, right? Which is pretty hard considering what, what they did. And, um, and, 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 and they wouldn't engage. So, you know, so we were at a point where, you know, we had to decide what the appropriate next steps were, right? And, uh, and we really, when we think about those sort of things, we think about it in terms of natural consequences, right? That it's not about punishing someone or imposing some kind of a punitive thing, but it's like, you behaved inappropriately in this space and you're not willing to work to make that right. So your access to that space is gonna be taken away, right? Um, it's the same thing you might do with like, a young child, right? It's like, um, and um, 
So, so what we decided in that case was that based on what had happened, it was not appropriate for that person to, to be allowed back at DrupalCon um, you know, for the time being. But we always leave, you know, we always talk about, we, we always leave that, that, that path to come back, right? And so if and when that person does choose to engage with us, and we know that people grow and change over time and everything, and they're able to express a real understanding of, of what occurred and a, and a desire and willingness to make it right, you know, they're not banned forever, um, you know, um, unless they choose to be, right? And so, um, but in that case, you know, again, we made a recommendation to the Drupal Association, which is legally and fiscally responsible for DrupalCon, to say, hey, this person shouldn't be, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, allowed back at DrupalCon. And, um, you know, and, it, and again, they, they took that advice. I mean, they didn't have to. They could have, they could have said, no, you know, um, you know, we choose not to follow your advice. But um, uh, so really our, our authority is, is that we can make recommendations to the people who are responsible for, you know, the individual spaces. So uh, another example is if there's an incident on Drupal Slack. Um, Drupal Slack is, there's nobody who's currently responsible for Drupal Slack except for the volunteer admins who, who are running it. So if there's, but the code of conduct does apply. You agree to the code of conduct when you uh, join Drupal Slack. Uh, and if somebody, uh, and if there is an issue that involves us and, uh, you know, and, and we work it through and, and, and come to a decision, we basically have to work that out with, with those admins. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's not like our word is law. Uh, we can just make some really strong recommendations. There's the old way, the ban hammer, yeah. is easy. Yeah. Um, you know that's that that would. It's not something we want to do. We want to do something you know that, that's far more constructive. But I'll be honest with you. I I, I I've taken on simple issues. Uh, that have come in in the in the in the kind of um, reporting queue, thinking, oh well, that'll be okay. That's no big deal, and it, it it's taken hours of my life. You know, the things that we did. <laughs> I'm looking at all of the smirks here now. Um, the things that we do and the processes we go through to do that and to do it in the proper way is hard. Um, it's hard work, and we do it because we think it's the right thing. So the question was, should we rename the group to, yeah, or idea, should I say? Yeah, we can't make changes to our own charter. But yeah, I think, I mean, community, to be fair, community working, it, like anything, I mean, like we all, well, we all, like a lot of people who have been looking at the governance recently know a lot of this stuff comes from legacy, right? It's, it's stuff that's five plus years old. Uh, and Drupal's come a long way in those five plus years. So, so I think there's uh, there's a lot of things like that could be reviewed. And I think, uh, again, I think that's the kind of thing that should be coming up in the governance review anyway, the governance process, whatever that that turns out to be. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I don't think community working group really says much about what we do at all. And I I would personally I would agree. Um, I, I would look at something more like the commu uh, community health group, but that sounds a little bit too like insurance. But, <laughs> but yeah, something something along those lines. In in that, that's really what we. I think, just as Rachel was saying, what underlying it for all of us is is about the health of the community, the positivity in the community, and um, uh, because the stuff in the, our previous that I wasn't there for, but in Dublin, it's it's worth. If you get a chance to have a look, uh, it, it's, it's statistics, but it's interesting statistics to see 
uh, how the various things like governance, but also like what the CWG does relates to things like burnout of developers. You know, it's so, it really is about community health. And, and while we do conflict resolution as a kind of day-to-day -day activity, um, the impact of that is something way, way more. And I think I would, I would yeah. I mean, in terms of an idea, I'm, I, I back that one thoroughly, but we can't do it ourselves, so. So, yeah, I think did we you have a, have maybe one or two more yeah. questions. So, uh, first, I just want to thank you all for, for the job you do. I know it's a tricky job, and, uh, and uh, I'm very glad that this organization or this community have you guys. I've been in other open source projects where there's no code of conduct, and to be honest, it's an unfair question. Thank you. 